So we're, we're in the process of releasing a brand new book called Skip the Cue, and, and the subtitle of that is that, you know, that if, you're, if you want to be one of those influential leaders, uh, influential leaders don't stand in lines looking at other people from the backside, right? So you want to skip the cue. Now, there are a couple things that I've kind of figured out about the process that a lot of people go through to become successful that really don't work very well. And luckily, I kind of figured out some of these things at an early age. And, and kind of learn from them during that part. But I'll tell you how the, the, the background for the, for the book came about. I kind of noticed that a lot of times people really, really hate to stand in lines. You ever go to the DMV and you're, you're getting your, your license renewed or something like that, if there's any kind of line, if it takes more than five minutes, all of a sudden people are getting upset and antsy because they don't really want to be there. They feel like they're being forced to kind of stand in that line. Uh, going through the, the lines at the airport, the TSA, you know, people hate to do that. Uh, because it seems taxing. It's something that most people don't really, really want to do. However, last week, uh, my family and I went to a, 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 a screening of a, of a movie that just came out. It was you know, maybe three or four days after the, the movie was released, one of the biggest movies out right now. And it, we knew that the movie theater was going to be crowded, so my wife actually went online, bought tickets ahead of time, so, and she was able to print them out, so that all we had to do was just show up and stand in line, didn't have to go and stand in the ticket line or anything like that. So, but by the time we get there, there's already, I would say, 40 or 50 people in line, and we were there probably 45 minutes before the movie started. And the, so during that 45 minutes or so, while we're sitting around waiting for the doors to open up for us to kind of go in and see the movie, I'm looking around and, and the, the folks that are standing in line to see the movie aren't nearly like the ones that I see at the DMV or at the, at the, at the TSA lines. It was like people actually wanted to be there. People were actually talking to each other. They were laughing. They were giggling, that kind of thing. It was like they, they, they were actually having fun and building camaraderie while they were in line. I thought that was kind of odd, you know, because lines are something that most people want to avoid. But for some reason, if there's a, if there's a takeaway, if there's a payoff, then people are more likely to, to want to be in that line. So it started me thinking about, and that's a great analogy, by the way, to the way that most people's career grow in their careers as they, as they get older and more experienced. Um, so basically, the, the title of my book, Skip the Cue, is to get people to see that if you are in the process of in line waiting your turn, and then you're probably going to be uh, disappointed. So you, you probably want to do things just a hair differently. Uh, I'll show you how I kind of figure this out. The, the first thing that you want to worry about or, or know about anyway about, about standing in lines or getting in that queue is that your belief system actually creates the lines that you stand in. I'll give you a great example of this. When I was about, I was probably 17 years old or so, I, was, I had my first real job uh, and I was working for a fast food company in the mall. And it was, it was fun, it was interesting, especially for somebody who was you know, 15, 16 years old. I, I, I get, you know, got to hang out the mall and, and visit with my friends would come in and visit with me and stuff like that. And during that first few months that I was there, I was probably there for about, I would say, better part of a year, I guess. And I, I was, since it was my first job, I wanted to make a really good impression. I was, I was, very, I was a very diligent worker. I, I studied the process, made sure I did everything, played, played by the rules, and, and did everything that my, my boss, my manager, wanted me to do. Well, I, apparently I, I made a fairly good impression on one of the executives that came in from the home office. He was only there for a couple of days, just kind of checking on some things, talking to the franchise owner. And it, but he pulled me aside while I was while I was working one day, and he said, "Hey, Doug, why have you not taken the the shift leader test to to become a shift leader?" And at the time, I didn't even know that was part of my the process. But it actually meant a, you know a bonus, a, a an, an extra wage that I was that I was that would that would be in line for if I actually took this test. So I figured you know it's pretty easy, probably a pretty easy test. I should go ahead and take it. So. Uh, and I did. I, I passed the test and and uh, and was in line to be the next shift supervisor when it came up. About a month and a half later, a new manager was a new general manager was was hired. And this was after I'd taken the test. After the executive come in and had come in and told me that that uh, I would be a good shift supervisor. Well, the general manager, because she was brand new, uh, she knew that we were short a shift shift leader, so she went out and hired one. And, and of course, I, I don't know this. I'm, I kind of go in one day to work and all of a sudden there's a new guy and he's got the new shift leader tag on his, on his, uh, on his lapel. And, and I was devastated. I was really upset because up until that point, my belief system had created in my head, in my own head, my, my belief system has, had created the idea that I had already gotten that position. I had already achieved it. I had already worked. I'd done the work and, and I, was, I was the person that should be in line. And the, uh, because I didn't get that, that supervisory position, 
I started to get angry. I started to get upset. The first person I got angry at was my boss. You know, I was like, she did this to me, right? It, and, and then the next person I got upset with was the new shift leader, but which, who, by the way, was a, a really nice guy. He was, uh, he, I, I actually got along with him fairly well when we weren't talking about work stuff. A uh, very nice guy, good hard worker. I deserved to be a, 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 a in management position because he did have more experience than me. He had, was older and, and uh, had more experience, that kind of thing. But it still, it, it didn't hurt. It didn't help my attitude. In fact, over the next three months or so, I, I my attitude began to get worse and worse and worse. So in basically about a six month period of time, I went from in the in the prior three months being such a diligent worker that an executive kind of identified me as somebody that should be in a leadership position within the company, all the way to being kind of the problem child for the new manager when when she came in. And, and it was, and the only thing that really changed in that time period was just my attitude. My belief system I had, uh, in the beginning was, ooh, I'm, I am the new leader. I am the, the potential leader. I'm just waiting in my, waiting for my spot in line to, to come up. But when that didn't happen, my belief system shifted dramatically. It's, they're all against me. <laughs> they want me to fail, right? So as a result, that attitude shift made it to where I was not the, it was, kind of almost unemployable at the, at the location. So, so that was kind of the first thing that happened to me. And, and, and again, all of these things that I'm gonna tell you about are things that started to, to change the way that I see the value that a person has in, in, in the business world. The next one that occurred actually wasn't at work, but it was, it was when I played football in college. Uh, the the uh, bullet point here is that your experience actually makes you want to change the line or change the cue that you're in. What will happen is when you learn from this one and realize that that by changing your attitude you have the potential to hurt yourself and hurt other people when you're because of the line that you're in. Sometimes what will happen is you'll say, well, gosh, maybe I'm just in the wrong line, and you want to move to a, to a new location. So that's what happened to me in college. I was I had um, I had come in as a walk on to the the uh, football team that I w wanted to play for in college. So the first couple of years that I was that I was on the team, I worked. I had to work harder than everybody else. Since I was a walk on, I didn't wasn't on scholarship. I had to. I had to. I had to spend more time working out. I had to spend more time running. I had to spend more time in the game films and the room and all that kind of stuff. Things that that other people weren't willing to do because I had I had a, a bigger hurdle to overcome. And. The the process was that at least in the linebackers where I was where, where the position that I was that I was competing for they traveled the first three linebackers and I was the fourth string linebacker so they, all I had to do was go move up one position in, in the ladder in this line that I create that, that was created if I just moved up one more rung on that ladder one more spot in that line I made the travel spot and and from then it gets a little bit easier to to play in the games so that was my goal my goal was not to start <laughs> my goal was just to get up in line so that i could travel with the team and uh, my sophomore year in in college the, the, between my sophomore and my and my junior year i found out that the uh the team had recruited a brand new linebacker uh, a guy that actually ended up playing in the in the nfl for a number of years he uh, he but we but since i knew he was coming in i knew that i was gonna have to work even harder over the summer and everything so when i got back and i was back down to fourth on the on the depth chart i, I was it was basically the same thing that happened to me back here happened to me in, in on the football team as well i, I had basically gotten to the point where uh, yeah, i thought that everybody was against me they're trying to make it to where i can't succeed you know, I'm playing by the rules, I'm waiting my turn in line, and all of a sudden, you know, they, something happens to where somebody, somebody jumps ahead of me or somebody, somebody uh, breaks the integrity of the line by jumping ahead of me, and, uh, and that's where it, I started to get upset. Now, this one was a little bit different because I'd had that experience prior to, uh, to the, the uh, football experience where I, um, I, you know, my attitude had shifted so much that I ended up getting fired. I knew I didn't want to get fired from the football team, so I had to find a different way to kind of deal with this. So I knew that getting angry wasn't going to help. Getting angry at the coach isn't going to make him want to play me. And getting angry at the, the uh, new starting linebacker wasn't going to make him you know, like me more and he probably would kill me if he found out I was angry at him. So you know, those, no, neither of those things were, were good options, so I had to find a different option. My option was, I just, I'm in the wrong line. Right, so basically, what I did was I went to I got to know the offensive players since I was playing on the scout team. I got to know the offensive coaches pretty well, and so I went up to the uh, the tight end coach and asked him if I could move over and. 
took me a little bit of negotiating to, uh, to get to that point, but, but by, by changing, by making my, myself available to move to a new line, I, I, I was able to kind of tap into an opportunity that probably wouldn't have existed if I hadn't been looking for it. So that's, a, that, so, and that happens to a lot of people when we're, when we're kind of identifying these lines that we're in, these, these self-created lines, we can move from line to line in order to kind of increase our success. The real leaders, though, are the ones that realize the bullet point number three. They realize that the line never really existed in the first place. And I kind of figured that out as I, as I graduated from college and I, and I got into my first first career. My, my degree was actually in the oil business. It was, it was a business degree, but it was specific in the oil industry. And by the time that I got out of college, the price of oil had dropped way low. It, it, when, I, when I first went into college, I think the price of oil was somewhere around $100 a barrel. By the time I graduated, it was about $16 a barrel. So what I started noticing as I was the, the, the last guy that was hired by the, the, the company that I worked for, I realized that if, if layoffs occurred, which was fairly likely in the very near future, I'd probably be the first one out the door as well because the last one in, first one out kind of thing. So I started looking for other career options. So just like I did before, I was looking for, hey, I need to, I need to move to a new line because this line has hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people for me in this corporate hierarchy, maybe thousands. And uh, for me to, to work my way up through that hierarchy was going to be fairly challenging and probably impossible depending, since the economy was the way it was. So I started looking for a new line to kind of move into. As I started interviewing, though, with, at other companies to to find out what I wanted to do with my life, I, I went into a sales career first. And one of the things I kind of realized about, about starting to, to sell was that salespeople are one of the few careers that you can get into where you actually get paid exactly what you deserve. <laughs> so if you go out and you make a lot of sales, you make a lot of money as if it's a commission only sales. If you go out and you make a few sales, you don't get paid very well, right? So, so basically what, what happened was I started to realize that bullet point number three was actually true, that the line didn't really exist, there was no line. And that actually led me to eventually starting my own company when I, when I got into my 30s and, and eventually getting to the point that by the time I was in my mid 30s, I was a multi-millionaire. So that all all happened as a result of these early ideas that, that kind of came about. Most people don't figure this stuff out until they've been in the career for 10, 15, 20, 30 years and some people never figure it out at all. Uh, they, a lot of times folks will get to a point that where they're in a career and they feel, realize they've been passed over and, and they get upset, they get angry and not realizing that the, the reason for that anger doesn't really exist, it's all in their mind. It's, some, it's a belief system that they've created. One of the things that you'll kind of realize as you get further along in, in your career is that, you know, in fact, one of the guys that was my mentor early on when I got into sales uh, kind of said something that, that seemed kind of funny at the time, but it's so true. He said, hey, Doug, you are where you are because that's where you want to be. <laughs> so the belief system that you create for yourself identifies where you are and it, and it identifies where you're going. The good news is, is that you can change your belief system by growing, by becoming a better leader, by becoming a better manager, by becoming a better people person. All of those things add to our belief system so that we're able to accomplish more. The things you read, the people you listen to, the people you hang around with, those are the things that will determine your success in life. It's not the situation that you're in. It's basically the, those things that you surround yourself in. Um, well, I, um, Earl Nightingale was uh, years ago. He, did, he had this uh, he had this series that he called "The Strangest Secret," and basically what he said was that a person will become what he thinks about the most. So whatever you're thinking about the most, if you're thinking about how angry you are with your situation, or if you're thinking about you know how you're, you've wasted your time and you've been you've been in the wrong line. Those kind of things are detrimental to you. If you're thinking about where you're going and the step-by-step -step process that you want to take to, to kind of get there, that's where the real growth occurs and that's where the real success comes from. So if you want to be a good leader, if you want to be that influential leader, you can't be the influential leader by looking at somebody else's backside. You got to get out of the line. You got to create some success for yourself and the way that you do that is to go out and make things happen on your own.